Hi everyone, um, my name is Zanette Thomas. Um, I'm also known uh, within the last, I say, 10 years on social media as Mama Pill. Um, uh, I am, um, I would say, one of the 10 original apprentices of our um, beloved late elder master herbalist from Honduras, uh, Alfredo Dorrington Bowman, also known as Sabi and Dr. Sabi. Um, I met Dr. Sabi in um, 1981 on the island of St. Croix where um, my ancestors uh, reside, I think like way back as far as the 1400s. And um, one of uh, the things that uh, were like sort of uh, exciting about meeting Sabi is that um, I actually journeyed back to St. Croix in 1981 when my mom, who left St. Croix in the 50s to live in the United States, particularly New York City, she and my father did the, both, did the same exact thing. Um, one day in the 70s, I was already a mother and uh, my daughter was having reactions to uh, her, her, her childhood shots. And um, everybody was telling me, oh, this is normal, this is what happened, da 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 da. But anyway, she kept getting ill. And one day I, I went to my mother for advice and I asked her, did this kind of thing happen to her and her siblings when they were children? And she said, Oh no, you know, when we were children, you know, because she was born in the 30s, she said, um, we, we never were vaccine, we never did, were vaccinated, we never had a common cold, you know, we were never sick as children. And I said, you never had a cold? And she says, no. And so I said, well, how's that possible? So she said, my mother uh, was a bush woman. So what that meant was she knew the local native herbs from the rainforest. And part of that culture and tradition she came from, which her mother did and her mother's mother did, was they used the local tropical indigenous herbs as say food, and they also used it as medicine. So when she told me that, I was, I was excited. I wanted to go to St. Croix learn from my grandmother who was still alive on my father's side and my aunts on my mother's side. So that's why I moved to St. Croix in 81. And one night, um, a friend of mine who had also moved there from New York City invited me to the rainforest to visit her herbalist. And that herbalist was Sadie. So um, I uh, did an apprenticeship with him beginning in 81. And by 1985, I returned to New York City and Sabi and my aunt and I opened up uh, the Ogun Herbal Research Institute in Brooklyn. Before you get to that, um, tell the world who were you pregnant with oh. at the time? Oh, so oh, in 1981, when I went um, to meet Sabi in the rainforest of St. Croix, I was well, I was probably like eight and a half months pregnant with Kamani, who is known in social media uh, mostly as KT, the arch degree. So uh, yeah, I was pregnant with KT at the time that I met him. And when I began, so when KT was born on November 3rd, 1981, uh, what paralleled that time was Sabi, came from the, he came from out of the forest, the rainforest of, of St. Croix, and he, he, was, he got an a actual brick and mortar uh, location at 429 King Street in Fredericksted, St. Croix. So when that opened, I say probably in the month of December, he offered a apprenticeship for 10 women on the island. And um, I was one of them, and uh, the sister who took me to meet him, Naima, she was one. And then a lot of people know um, Patsy Williams. Uh, she was also one of the 10. So 
that that's like a little bit of the background in terms of you know like who I am and the purpose of me doing this um, um, doing this uh, film right now is that I am going to be um, writing my book about my experience with uh, the whole healing journey because I, I think I you know it, I've been on a healing journey for many years when I met Savy he was very instrumental in me succeeding at what I my, what my intent was on my healing journey so I'm going to be writing my first book uh, sharing with everyone uh, many of the things I witnessed, um, much of my involvement and my participation, and uh, I feel it's important too that my book tell the story of so many people that made our Savy, my journey, Ma's journey, like successful at what we did, and. Um, the book will also cover the um, reason of the court case and um, the fact that I was one of the uh, indicted uh, individuals in the court case. So um, I am like currently still continuing the work, still continuing the legacy. Um, I have a I have a company. The company is called Greenleaf Herbal Solutions. Uh, the website is greenleaf-herbs.com and um, uh, also in the works will be an actual uh, documentary um, of my journey too because uh, I think you know people enjoy um, meeting a lot of the people like I said who were instrumental in our success and um, I've also been fortunate enough that I was able to keep a lot of archival material that I think is important for people, you know, for you know, all the nations of the world to know this story and know the facts about the story, the fact about all the players, the who, what, where, and how this thing happened. And to also emphasize that the work we were all doing was really God inspired because um, a lot of people don't know this and I know there's a lot of footage out about Sebi saying many things but almost every day of his life he gave the glory to God and um, he uh, would always quote Genesis 129 um, almost every day to somebody you know reminding people that uh, this was not his idea about the healing about the urge being for the healing of the nation that this these words actually and this message actually is spiritual and is biblical so um, just look forward you know stay tuned um, before you wrap up, can you tell us a real funny story about Dr. Sebi? Because a lot of people don't know how crazy he was. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you say that, right? Because I was talking to one of the young ladies who is an apprentice, uh, one of the apprentices, because a lot of people don't know a lot of the women that were apprentices. Because what I noticed, I figured out later on, is that many women that he trained, he didn't let everybody, he didn't let the other women know <laughs> that they were being trained, right? And I guess that's like a sad thing, you know, uh, you know, that he did what he did. Let me see, a funny story. Um, oh my goodness. Now that, you, now that I'm on the spot, you know, nothing's coming up, but, it's, but as soon as I walk away, I'll be like, oh yeah, this one and that one. A story. Oh gosh. Well, okay, so this was funny. This was a funny thing that I witnessed in St. Croix. This is in the 80s. Uh, you know, like Savy, a lot of people got an image of him that he was this, you know, uh, brass, you know, uh, arrogant, you know, sort of mean spirited energy, right? So a lot of adults were afraid of him. But 
when he had the when he had the clinic in St. Croix uh, on Fed in Fedgerston, there were these little children. Like Usha was like five, and she used to hang out with these little girls that lived next door named Bebe. And then my daughter was five. No, wait, she was about seven, right? And and so um, there was a little girl named Astral that was absolutely not afraid to save me. So. Sabi would be, you know, if you, if you, anybody knows anything about Sabi, Sabi was very good for storytelling. So he would have like 10, 12 people just standing around, sitting around, and they would just be so attentive, you know, listening to him. And he would just be in character, just painting a whole movie for you to see and feel. And so one day he had that kind of audience, right? And Ashley walks in and she, she was, her mother used to like really dress her up. So she was short, very beautiful little girl, but she was like short, but she was older than she was short, but they had a dress. So maybe that day she came in, she had on like some Indian, you know, like Indian kind of sorry thing, all, you know, beautiful silk and everything. So she comes in and everybody, oh, look at that pretty little girl. And she, Sadie, something about his big mouth. You just need to be quiet with your big mouth. Ha ha, nobody's scared of you. I, I mean, it, it was so outrageous. What she said, you know, being so small, he's towering over her and he's looking at Astro like, girl, and I think he said something like, girl, you need to sit down and be quiet. You know how Sadie would. Like some other adults would want to uh, think she's sassy, want to punish her and hit her and beat her and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, I, I'm trying to capture it the best I can for people to get it. Uh -huh. But it was so hilarious. But you know, he that was just you know he he had a lot of moments like that. So like I said, a lot of people think he was very serious, you know. But you know, he had a real fun side a real, you know, like young little little boy side that where he never really grew up and well, well I for one I feel honored that you're here in the studio with us. Yes. Yeah. I know for a fact that the government was trying to get you to turn on Dr. Yeah. Sebi. Yeah. And yeah. you threatened to take my children. Yes, and yes. And I like and that all you, of that I love all that. that craziness. But I think I think you know this, right? <laughs> You and I and Zavi know this, right? I don't know, should we tell them or should we let them read the book? <laughs> let them read, read, read the book. Let them read the book, right, because I'm going to put it in the book. Yes, yes. And I'll also, I, when I do the visual doc, when I do the visual documentary of which we're going to yes. be doing, I'm going to tell that thorough story. So, I, yep. I, I fell in love with you when I found out how gangster you were. <laughs> 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 I want to thank you in you're advance welcome, you're for welcome. telling the world about that story. Yeah, yeah, you th you're welcome. All yeah. right, so let so, anybody know where they can Oh yeah, so, so you, um, you can reach me at 424-200-5469. Um, that's, uh, that's the phone contact and um, there, that phone, we, we basically work Tuesday through Saturday um, answering that phone, um, uh, you know, either we have a person and sometimes we are, uh, have to, it has to go to voicemail so you can leave a voicemail message or you can email us for information at, um, let me see which email I should give you. Right now I'm going to give you uh, Annette Thomas. 230 at iCloud. Uh, I believe there's also sales at greenleaf.com. And the website is uh, www.greenleaf-herbs.com. So I have an online store, and that's greenleaf-herbs.com. The, er the, 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 um, the online store features all the um, formulas that um, I was taught in my apprenticeship with Sabi that we eventually were indicted for <laughs> uh, formulating, preparing, and distributing in the black communities, you know, all over the world. 
So I, those are the formulas that are available on that online site.